The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA. I'm one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Between Taramina's on OAA Naval Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. We got a big show this week. We got two football coaches this week to talk to. Um, we got um, Stony Creek coach Nick Merlo, and also we got Roger, Royal Oak coach Justin Truitt joining us later in the show. Um, first, let's talk to Stony Creek coach Nick Merlo. Coach, welcome. You are on the beautiful shores of Lake Superior in the UP. That's right, Sammy. Thanks for having me on today. Um, when you look at you guys this year, I mean, like, how's the offseason been for you guys? Um, how's the offseason been? Well, our kids have worked extremely hard this off season. They've really uh, went back to the roots of what the Emerald culture is all about through hard work in the weight room. We did our own speed training this year as well, and just really looking forward to how they continue to develop as we head into fall camp here. Um, talk about, I mean, like you talk about, of course, Stony Creek. Obviously, 2019. Um, that was the year a lot of people look at. Um, that was a bit. That was a really special. Uh, twenty twenty actually. That was a special year for you guys. Um, you still got a couple guys from that team back, and I know running back John Fogler's back. Um, talk about how um that team has resonated to um future teams. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a good stepping stone, and it's a nice blueprint for our underclassmen to look up to and see how hard they worked and what they accomplished, and now our guys are ready to get to the next level. Um, of course, talk about talk about your offense. Obviously, of course, your um, I believe your brother runs the offense, and and um, Coach Griffin runs the defense. Um, talk about both sides of football a little bit. Yeah, I'm really fortunate to have two amazing coordinators, along with several other awesome coaches that not only love the game of football but love our kids too, and they do a great job developing not only the football player but the relationship between the kids. And you know, Coach Griff coaching the defense and. Coach T coaching the offense, uh, they do a phenomenal job. And, um, you know, we've added some things this off season, so we're looking to be a, a bit more dynamic moving into the fall. Um, talk about, obviously, your um, father, of course, um, the legendary coach at Rochester. Um, and what has he been to you, like, getting you ready, for getting you at, getting you the Stony Creek job? Of course, you were an assistant at Rochester. Um, how is it, I mean, talk about, how um, interesting is coaching at Stony Creek, you know what I mean, and not at the Alamater? Yeah, you know, it's, you know, I love the game of football. It's everywhere you need to be coached and you have an opportunity to coach a kid. It's, um, you know, would I ever think I would have been at Stony Creek when I was in high school? Probably not. But the opportunity came about and it's an awesome opportunity. I love the players and the coaches and the families in the Stony Creek community. And it's, it's been phenomenal, but definitely a history you know, growing up being a, a ball boy, a tee boy, and uh, a water boy for the Falcon, and then playing my. Mm -hmm. Um. Obviously, talk about the um, talk about your team coming up this year. You got um, obviously got a, your front seven looks very it looks very solid. You got John Fogger coming back at running back. Um, um. Talk about talk about um your team outlook coming into the year. Yeah, our, our, our guys, like I said earlier, you know, they worked really hard this offseason. We had a really great summer. Um, they have very lofty goals and expectations of themselves. And with the returners like John Fogler and Seth Lumen, who are three-year starters for us, you know, we have high expectations for them as well. And so uh, we take it a day at a time because, um, you know, we play in a really, really tough OA Red, which we're – um, excited to be a part of. And so we're just looking forward to August 8th when you start two days. Talk about um, the quarterback comp competition. Of course, you, um, I mean, like, um, how's your quarterback situation looking for you guys? Yeah, we have a really good quarterback this year, uh, Justin Taylor. He's a senior. He's an elite hockey player and football player. Um, he had a great summer. Mm -hmm. He can run the ball and throw the ball. He's super smart, uh, football intelligent kind of guy. And, uh, and we started looking to do a little bit more with him this year. Um, talk about, I mean, like your receivers, um, any breakout players, especially in the receivers in the secondary. Um, you know, those yeah. are some of my question marks coming into the year for you guys is, 
the um, secondary and the wide receiving core? Yeah, we have we have quite a few secondary returning that were underclassmen last year that were sophomores. Um, Kyle Parks, Jonah McKay are returning for us, along with John Fogler. Uh, we got a couple other young guys uh, competing for some starting spots in the secondary. When it comes to receiver, we've uh, re- worked really hard on that part of our game to try to make us ourselves more balanced. And uh, a player to look for is Sam McDermott, okay. senior four. He had a couple of big catches for us last year. We're looking uh, for him to step up his game uh, this year. Um, when you look at when you look at um, Stony Creek, of course, we look at of course program strength. I mean, obviously, you have Hart Middle School right next door to you guys. Um, talk about the youth football levels and the program strength. Um, you know, component of Stony Creek football. Yeah, we try to we try to engage with our youth programs as much as we can. Um, I think it's really important just to to share that love of the of the game of football to the youth, so that these uh, young players want to play football when they're in high school. We are fortunate that our middle school that feeds into us is across the street. Uh, their coaches do a phenomenal job, led by Coach Alex DeSantis, who used to be on our uh, staff at Stony, and he's he's taken the role at heart and has done a phenomenal job there. So. You know, and in, in the city of Rochester, we have, you know, the Rochester football peewee team, along with junior Cougars and our, our Catholic school, Holy Family. So, you know, the game of football is something that's important to our community members and the youth programs do a really, really great job in the, in the community of Rochester. Um, let's bring up, of course, let's talk about the city rivals. Um, you look at, of course, you're at, at Sony Creek. There's two other schools in Rochester. You got Rochester High and Rochester Adams. Um. Talk about your thoughts about, you know, going against Adams. You know, Adams was last year in the Division One state finals. And then Rochester, of course, you know, being a former Fal- being a Falcon. Um, talk about the city of Rochester, you know, your two rivals, um, Rochester and Rochester Adams. Yeah, I think it's, it's always good when uh, the teams, your rivals are good because it elevates your game and it elevates – uh, the desire to play football in your community. And that's that's what we want. Um, obviously, Coach Petrudo and his staff and his players did a great job last year earning their way to the finals. And, you know, Coach Vernon and his staff and uh, their players have really uh, done a great job as well. So I think we have three really good teams in our city. And uh, it's pretty awesome to uh, be a part of that. Um, talk about – before we talk schedule and um... – you're, um, we, before we talk about the schedule, I, I want to know about the, um, I know you guys do like a, um, you know, you guys do like a, like a classic game, like, you know, where you guys wear special uniforms and all that. Um, talk, talk, talk about that to our viewers. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it up, Sammy. So we do a commitment to a cause game every year and we rotate between three organizations and they're local. So the first one we've ever done was Dutton Farm. And Dutton Farm works with special needs adults after uh, their schooling is up. And there's three components to what Dutton Farm is. I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, but then we, after Dutton Farm, we, we worked with the Yellow Ribbon Fund, who works with post-9-11 veterans. And then our third organization we work with is the New Day Foundation that meets families and people where, where they're at with their needs as they go through treatments uh, with cancer, um, or any or, or other type of sicknesses, but typically cancer. Um, but this year we're cycling back around. So this is year four doing our commitment to a cause game. So year one, we did Dutton Farm. Year two, Yellow Ribbon Fund. Year three, New Day Foundation. And so now we're back uh, with Dutton Farm. And it's just an awesome experience. Um, Jenny Brown, the, the CEO over there at Dutton Farm, she does a phenomenal job. Um, we, this year had some time to go over to the farm and and spend it with the farmers, with our leadership from football, band, cheer, dance in our, in our student section, which is called the core, uh, which was really fun. And then we had our whole team show up a week after that and meet with the farmers and see what all done farm has to offer. And there's really three things. There's a adult education aspect. There's a community uh, involvement aspect and then there's that um, uh, job uh, opportunity and so some of the things that Dunn Farm provides is they actually have their own shop in downtown Pontiac called Everybody and they make 
bath bombs, candles, fragrances, and our community, we called it the buyout blitz uh, last Tuesday. We went down to the store and tried to buy up as much uh, product as we could. Every $20 spent at everybody is one hour of work for a farmer. So it's just a really awesome opportunity and program to get involved in. We're honored that uh, they're back at it again this year with us. And so for that game, uh, that will be our week three game I guess was Bloomfield. Uh, we'll have a special dinner for the farmers uh, and their families, and it'll honor them at halftime. So we're really, really excited about that. I am looking forward to seeing that. Um, talk about, I mean, like, that is a very, very great cause um, to honor Dutton Farms. You guys get to wear special uniforms. Um, great experience. I mean, very, very great experience. Um, Talk about um, your schedule. Of course, um, this is probably very interesting. I mean, like, of course, you're in the red, as mentioned. You're going against the likes of West Bloomfield, Adams, Oxford, Lake Orion, and Clarkston. Um, you know, we're going to talk the um, those games shortly, but I want to talk about your non-league. Of course, um, I'm very curious to see your week one. I mean, when you look at, it was originally supposed to be Port Huron, but you got Detroit Muppet on there. So what brought brought that to occasion? It's just an opportunity to play a really good Mumford team came about, and so we took we took it, and uh, our community is excited to travel down to Detroit on uh, August 25th, I believe, at 7 p.m., and so I know that they've had a lot of success in the past, and they have some really good athletes and some talented football players, and so we're looking forward to the challenge. Um, and then you, when I look at your other non-league games, you got Rochester, obviously you know the rivalry there. Um um, and then you have Bloomfield Hills as well. Then you have New Baltimore Inker Bay, of course, coached by Mike Gioni, um, former coach in Macomb, Dakota, and um, also Adam Warren D. LaSalle. So can you break down those three non-league games for me, please? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Programs have had great success in the past, uh, especially um, as of recent years with uh, Bloomfield winning their league, Rochester being undefeated in 2020, having a really good year last year. And uh, then you got Anchor Bay, who's uh, coming up, and they're, I believe they play in the Mac Red this year, so they've earned the right to, you know, play with the, the big dogs as well. So uh, it's going to be some tough non league opponents for sure. I mean, when, you look at, when you're looking at it, obviously, you know, Rochester, they do have a lot of experience back. Bloopy Hills has a lot of experience back. Um, New Baltimore, Anchor Bay, of course, playing in that Mac Red, which is always one of the most vicious leagues in the state, of course. Um, you have some experience going against like the Chippewa Valley, going against Romeo. Um, those are two um, well-known teams in Macomb County. Um, so that, those are not going to be easy games for you. Um, talk about the red. Um, you look at, obviously, the teams there. Um, what are your thoughts of playing the OA red? Yeah, we think it's awesome. I mean, our players and coaches absolutely love it. We're up for the challenge. And our theme this year within our culture is why not us? And, we believe if we're at our very best each and every week, we have an opportunity to compete. And, um, you know, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And we believe that playing in the OA Red gets us prepared to have a run in the state tournament. So that's that's why when you do these things, you don't just do them to do them. You do them to be at your very best. And I think that we think that playing in the OA Red gives us the best opportunity to prepare ourselves for a run deep into the playoffs. Talk about your program strength. Obviously, your freshman JV programs, um, your sub varsity programs. Um, break those down a little bit. You know, your freshman and JV. Yeah, so we have, we have great numbers again this year. We have about 130 kids in our program. Um, you know, we're really thrilled to have such a great staff. Um, we have many teachers in the building that will coach our freshman team. They do a great job, led by Coach Don Wilson. And um, you know, when it comes to lower levels, it's all about development. Mm-hmm. So a lot of programs, they might focus on, you know, winning at the lower levels. And obviously that's important, but we want to develop the kids in the right way. We've, we believe we put the right coaches in the right position to do that. We developed a nice uh, blueprint for them uh, to get better uh, as, as players throughout the, their time at lower levels. So they're prepared and ready to rock when they become varsity football players. Um, talk about the armor up culture. I mean, like when you look at the, um, how did the armor up culture come up the Stony Creek. I mean, I know that and um, we talked about this in the past, um, but talk about it for our viewers, what armor up means. Yeah. So what armor up means to us is a never give up motto that 
you know, every each and every day we have to choose. Like, we have to choose to be different. We have to choose to make those tough choices to work hard, uh, to show elite attitude and effort. And within our culture, we talk about the principles of the fourth quarter, which are discipline, commitment, toughness, effort, and pride. And we define pride in our program is love for each other. And and then we also have our many character principles, which are to lead courageously, to enact justice, to act with integrity, to stand accountable, and to express empathy. Within those things, we have uh, talks constantly about culture and communication. And we believe that football is much bigger than a game and that these life lessons that we learn on the practice field and the game field transcend the game of football and, and help create awesome uh, young men in our communities that one day they'll be elite husbands and fathers. And it's really hard. It's hard to be righteous nowadays with all the things that are out there, especially on uh, social media and it's kind of how the world is a little bit right now where we want to give those our young men an opportunity to uh, be at their very best, uh, not only on the football field, but uh, as, as men. So the three main objectives we have in our program is to create lifelong relationships, player to player, player to coach and coach to coach. Uh, two is to commit to something bigger than yourself. And three is to reach your potential as students, athletes, and and young men of character. And so that's really our focus. And that's what Darwin culture represents in a nutshell. And our kids do a great job championing that. And it's really hard too, because when you, when you talk about having an elite culture and having high standards, people want to pick at you and, and tear you down. And it's really important that we stand together and we're not perfect, but we're striving uh, to be uh, our very best each and every day. So I'm really proud of our young men and our coaches in our program who have created this culture and uh, who champion it every day. Um, I want to get back to schedule a little bit here. Um, in the red, um, in the red, um, what is your, um, you know, when you look at the red, you're playing um, like the West Bloop. You got West Bloop a week three. That's going to be a very interesting game. Um, you got to play Lake Orion, Stony, I mean, Lake Orion, Oxford, um, Clarkston, and, um, you know, and then, um, and, and um, Adams, like on the tip of my tongue, it's been that morning. <laughs> but, um, Talk about playing those. Um, talk about playing those teams on um, this season. Talk about playing those. Yeah, five. I mean, they're, you know they're, they're great football teams, but you know so are we, and they have good football players, and so do we. And uh, we're just excited to, like I said, challenge ourselves each and every week. And you know, obviously, a lot of these teams have a larger history than, than we do, but that's what we're that's our goal is, and that's what the why not us. Uh, moniker is for this group is why can't it be the Stony Creek Cougars that um, are doing the elite things in the league and so we're looking forward to the challenge we know it's going to be we know it's going to be a challenge but our, our boys are up to the task and uh, we're really fired up to to take it on I know last season of course um you guys were you guys um according to the um playoffs you guys were the first team to miss out is that a motivation for you guys coming into the year trying to get in the post making the postseason again yeah, of course, you know, and, and it was our own fault. We didn't make it in. We, we left too many plays out on the field. And I think from those um, those mistakes and those experiences, you can learn. Um, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to, to have those uh, things happen only if you, you choose to learn from them and, and, and you get better from them. So, uh, yes, I mean, some of that stuff that we that we did on our, on our own, uh, we left some plays out there, some points out on the field that cost us uh, an opportunity to, to earn the playoffs. And so that's obviously one of the steps to winning a state championship is you got to make the playoffs first. So that's that's definitely step one. But, um, you know, we're focused on fall camp, August 8th for sure. Of course, playing Detroit Mumper week one, going down to Detroit. That is going to be very interesting playing against the Mustangs. Um before I let you go, Coach, um, I want to talk. I want to see what your expectations are coming into the year. Um, I know media day is coming up this week. Um, what is your expectations here for Stony Creek? Um, you know, as a whole program, um, as a whole community, um, coming into the year. I think I think the expectations that we set for ourselves is is how hard we play. Uh, we expect our young men to absolutely spend every ounce of themselves as we prepare for our teams week in and week out. And then when we get into, uh, you know, Friday night games, it's, it's, we're going to be physical, we're going to be tough and we're going to play as hard as we possibly can. You know, those are the things that we can control. Everything else is secondary. You know, you can, 
you can play really well and lose. You can play really bad and win. And, and so all we can control and focus on is how hard we play, how well we prepare. And so I expect our young men to have the confidence to come into every week, knowing that if they play their best, it gives themselves an opportunity uh, to come out with a victory. So um, we're really looking forward to the fall season. It's going to be, it's going to be a great, uh, a great fall this 2022 for sure. I am looking forward to it, seeing Stony Creek football in action this year. I'm Stony Creek coach Nick Merlo. Thank you for joining us this week. Enjoy the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, say hi to Lake Superior for me. I will, Sammy. Thanks again for having me on. Take care. Yep, you too. Yep. Yeah. Um, that was Coach Nick Merlo. Um, when I look at Stony Creek this year, a um, lot of expectations. Um, when you look at the Cougars being in the red, um, program strength, you know, um, I'm very curious to see um, the program is up and ready for being in the red. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see what happens going forward. I mean, I'm curious to see how Stony Creek does, um, and we'll see how it goes. Um, okay, now we're going to take a um, break here, and then um, we're going to talk to um, Royal Oak football coach Justin Truitt here on OA Now. Hold on to your hats. The big one is coming to Friendship Park on Friday, August 5th from 5 to 9 p.m. Orient Township brings you the 18th annual Big Red Gig Spectacular. See trucks, tractors, diggers, dozers, buckets, and backloaders side by side. Load up the entire family to see fire trucks and police vehicles. One night only. One night only. One night only. Come early, stay late for the insanity, and don't forget your camera. Admission and parking is free, free, free to the public. That's Friday, August 5th, Friendship Park, Big Red Gig. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termina here. Um, we got the um, coach of the Royal Oak Ravens, Coach Justin Truitt. Coach, thank you for joining us this week here on the pod. Hey, thanks for having me, Sammy. Excited to be a part of this. Um, when you look at this is your first year at Royal Oak. Um, la- I mean, like, talk about um, how are things to do? How are things this off season? How are things doing? You know, we're just getting our feet wet with uh, building this culture up and this program up from a. Uh, last couple of years um the kids have been excited we've had good numbers and we're excited about that and the biggest thing is just getting these kids excited to play football um talk about of course the, i know the history of royal oak i know hasn't been it's been rough i know 10 and 24 to last um since 2016 um have you thought i mean what changes have you um about the kids mindsets i mean any changes at all um to not think think about that well, the biggest thing for us is uh, building a program that's 6 through 12. So uh, I work at the middle school, and the biggest thing we've done is just promote our program at the middle school level, um, encouraging those kids to play for our middle school program and for the Titans. And then from there, um, you know, keeping those kids involved in our program and inviting them to different things to, to build our program up and to keep the numbers up and keep kids excited about Royal Oak football. So the biggest thing with us has been having these kids come to our events, the younger kids, and just really trying to make them uh, a part of our community. When you look at Royal Oak, I mean, like, I, I mean, I got, I got several good friends there at Royal Oak. Um, you look at the, um, are there going to be like, uh, I know with every, every program, there's like a transition period. You know what I mean? When you look at it and I talk about this analogy about the 2004 Detroit Pistons where, you know, under Larry Brown that they had to go through a coaching transition, um, had to happen during the season. Um, have you, um, when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, how do you think the players have adjusted to you this off season? Well, the benefit, uh, has been that I've been in the school district with these kids, you know, uh, Mackay Jenkins and Ellie Finch were middle school students of mine. So I think there was a sense of comfort when I came into the program, because these kids, again, had known me through the teaching uh, field. But I think the kids have adjusted well. This is a group of, you know, seniors and juniors that are just excited to get on the football field. There's some promising seniors. And then the junior class had a really good season last year as a JV team. And so I think they're just amped up and ready to continue that success on the field. Let's break down your team. Obviously, of course, um, you look at, you got a lot of experience back. I mean, everything, it does start with Makai um, coming back. Um, but I'm very curious to see about the line. I mean, obviously, you have Ellie Finch coming back. I'm playing at left guard, which is one of the um, one of the toughest positions up front is playing left guard. Um, talk about how Ellie's been um, 
been doing this off season for you guys. I know she's been doing very well in girls basketball, and then also she was a um, shot putter and discus some um, state state um state qualifier this year. Yeah, Ellie has a uh, tremendous uh, success as a student athlete in general. You know, she's a, a true leader on the field and in every sport that she plays. And her biggest thing this off season has just been uh, getting her fellow linemen out. So she leads. Uh, Two other returning players, Evan Towery and Carson Traub. They're two starters also coming back along with Aiden Tesh. So we feel pretty confident with our O-line, seeing that we're going to return four starters on that O-line. Talk about your quarterback. I mean, Hutt, I mean, like um, Hudson Seidel, of course, um, last season, um, you know, he had he had some up and downs this last season. Um, so talk about the development of him. Hudson has been working hard all off season. He's really hit the weight room and, you know, improved there, put on some strength and put on some muscle and then just taking in the new coaching concepts. And we're trying to just create a system that we think plays the Hudson's strengths. And so far, everything we've seen, Hudson has been, you know, excelling at that challenge of, you know, learning the new system and, you know, finding a, an offense that helps bring out the best of him. So he's been doing a nice job for us in this program and, we're excited to see what he does on Fridays. When you look at Royal Oak, a lot of people look at the Ravens known for their power, known for the power offense, obviously with the line, um, with Makai at running back. Um, any, any, um, but when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, like for me, the biggest question is receiver. Um, any, any, uh, I know I've looked at your seven on sevens and um, I've noticed, you know, um, I mean, like you've developed some balance a little bit. Um, any, any names to know for heading into the year for Royal Oak at the receiving spot? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of players that stand out. We brought in an offensive coordinator from Our Lady of the Lakes, his name, or at Waterford Mott last year, but his name is uh, Nathan uh, Hankey, and he's a, a wide receiver coach by trait. So he's been doing a nice job of getting uh, Steven Johnson, A.J. Garcia, and Colm Deshay, along with Ben Machiniak all ready to play. And we're really excited. They're a young group, primarily juniors and sophomores, but we think that they just have a ton of upside. And we're again, excited to see what they do on the football field. With the change of offense. I mean, like you're going, I mean, like um, how is the change of change of offense going to be for you guys? Uh, the change of offense is just going to be to play to our strength. Um, that's the biggest thing we have. A, we know we have a solid run game with Makai back there and we want to be able to compliment Makai and be able to compliment uh, Hudson to what he does on the football field. So we're just taking our time to install an offense that we think is going to be balanced, but also um, play to the strengths of this young wide receiving core that we have, as well as the strength of our returning players and Mackay and Hudson. So um, we've done, you know, we think a pretty good job of getting these kids ready and, and getting the system, but there's still a lot of time to go and hopefully we can continue to keep growing each day. Talk about the defense. I mean, like Royal Oak, I mean, like, um, you know, I mean, like, um, how has the defense been, um, adjusting to your, um, to this off season? Well, Sammy, the defense is kind of the exciting part. Um, I come from the John Bechtel coaching tree. I know that tree very well. Yep. I coached there with coach Albrecht and coach Siroch. And, um, uh, so we're going to take a lot of implements of what we used to do back at Farmington during those, uh, you know, eight consecutive playoff year runs and then uh, build upon that. So the defensive philosophy is going to, again, play to the strength of our kids. We think we have the kids in the right spot. Uh, we're excited about seeing what they did, especially on seven on seven. Um, but this defense is going to be a little bit aggressive, but also making sure that we're fundamentally sound. And we think that's a, a key approach to our defense this season. So we're going to, we're going to make sure that we're prepared. Um, before we talk, um, before we talk, um, rot city rivals and schedules, um, any changes to the uniforms at all? I mean, like, I know, I know, um, I'm, I'm known as the uniform critic and all that. Um, but any changes, to the uniforms coming up, new unis coming. Uh, Sammy, we are working on that right now. We're actually having, uh, our players are spearheading a little uniform reveal. So, yeah, we're going to have uh, new uniforms this season. Hopefully they meet your standards, but our kids are really excited about them. Uh, we had a lot of input from the kids on what they thought, and so uh, they're really excited, and 
We're excited to show them here shortly. We should have something out, hopefully by the end of the week on social media, kind of revealing those jerseys. I am really excited. Looking forward to this. Looking forward to that. Of course, I'm looking forward to the um, season. Um, looking forward to that. Um, let's go now from um, program strength. Of course, um, we talked earlier about the um, Titans. Um, talk about your um, your sub varsity teams. Um, how are they been doing? Uh, our middle school program has a lot of promise. We're very excited about them. Uh, there's a group of seventh and eighth graders there that uh, have been working hard. They've been uh, at our summer camps with us. We've really made a point of emphasis to have seventh and eighth graders work with us through conditioning this off season. And so we've had them out and they've just been working hard getting to know our players and our coaches. And then the biggest thing is having the middle school coaches around. We've actually invited them to everything this summer. So our players are all starting to feel comfortable six through 12 of all the coaches in our program, middle through middle school through high school. So that's a big um, emphasis that we have this season as making sure that we start treating this as a six through 12 program. Um, and then when you look at the six through 12, I mean, like um, when you look at program strength, I mean, like um, it looks like football is rising over that Royal Oak with the, um, with the numbers and all that. How are the numbers? Yeah. And we're not, we're noticing that trend too at the middle school. Um, last year we had 45 players on the team. Uh, we're hoping to have more than that this season and early numbers are showing that. And then at the JV level, we're, uh, we're looking at 60, um, which is an awesome number. We had 46 in the program last year. So we're looking at um, possibility of playing maybe some freshman games this season. Ooh. So we're really excited about just the, the numbers that we have so far. Everything you know will depend when we see them all in person come August, but so far our numbers have been a strength. Um, talk about, of course, we're going to bring your city rivals now into play, of course, um, Royal Oak, of course, we know that rivalry with Berkeley. Um, of course, I had Coach Shields on a couple of weeks ago. We talked about that the battle of um, the battle of Woodward. Of course, you have the um, a, a, a very interesting trophy with the word um, Lexington on one side, and then Catup on the other side. Um, talk about the rivalry with Berkeley a little bit here. Yeah, it's a rivalry I'm getting acclimated with, uh, learning a little bit more as uh, things progress and as the season goes on and the different experiences from the coaches that we have that have been a part of this program before. But uh, we have a returning uh, coach, uh, Coach Potter, who was the former head coach at Royal Oak, and uh, he's came on staff as our own line coach, and he's given us a little insight on what that rivalry is like, and we're just excited to be a part of it and um, hoping to – Put up a good fight when that uh, when that game comes on the schedule. And that's gonna be very interesting. Of course, that game's gonna be at Hurley Field this year. Um, talk about your other rivals. You got Troy. Um, that is a neighborhood rivalry. It's pretty close by. Um, I mean, talk about that rivalry a little bit with Troy. Um, you know, only only got to go down south. Uh, only go down the Crooks Road. Um, talk about that rivalry with Troy. Yeah, everything we've seen from Troy and, and, you know, Troy Athens are both two solid high school football programs that uh, we look forward to having on our schedule. And, and they're pretty back to back in our schedule, really. And um, we're just excited to continue that rivalry and put forth a good effort on the football field. Um, yeah. And also Ferndale, of course, I know has been a um, well-known name to Royal Oak fans, of course. And Royal Oak and Ferndale have a nice little rivalry as well. Yeah, watching uh, a little bit of their tape last year, that was an exciting week one matchup. Um, you know, I, I'm excited that we're going to play Ferndale a little bit later in the season uh, just to get both teams a little bit of uh, time to prepare and get ready because week one was so exciting last year that it will be fun to see uh, what these teams can do in week three. Um, now it's going to come down to my next one. This is schedule. Um, when you look at the schedule this year, you open up the year with Holly going to – um. Going to Holly, taking on Coach Billy Keenis, who um former coach at Troy Athens and at Berkeley. Um, going against Holly Week One. Um, that's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, can you break down that Week One matchup for me on your eyes going against the Bronchos? Yeah, you know Holly's a solid football program that has a lot of good things going for them. Um, we've seen a lot of the things that they've been doing throughout the summer and the new system that uh, the coach is bringing with him from Troy Athens. And 
So we're looking forward to kind of having this week one game where it's two programs that are kind of, you know, we hope turning the culture around a little bit and um, we're excited. We think it's a great first uh, matchup for us because of, again, just the changing of the, the coaches at the programs. Um, so we feel like we're kind of going through the, the same phase as they are at the same time. Um, and so then think that's a, okay. Ryan, continue. I think that helps. Yeah. And then, um, and then when you look at your other non-league games, you mentioned Troy, Troy Athens, but talk about your week nine going against Madison Heights Lamphere. Um, it's an interesting matchup um, with the with the Rams. Um, talk about playing against them in the um, – talk about playing against Madison Heights Lamphere. Yeah, we have all the respect for Madison Heights Lamphere. They have a great program. Uh, Coach O has done a fantastic job there, and we know that week nine they're going to be prepared and ready to go. And, um, you know, we've been keeping up with a little bit of their off-season program as well, and we know that they have good numbers and good turnouts and good work ethic and – um, we know it's going to be a tough battle, so we're just excited about the opportunity of playing a, a game with a close, uh, close town or cross town rival there. Um, obviously, let's talk about the gold as well. I mean, we already mentioned Berkeley a little bit. Um, talk about, I mean, like uh, I know Berkeley's got a lot coming back. Um, Avondale, of course, um, they're gonna they're gonna be a team we know very athletic. Um, talk about your thoughts about every team in the gold this year. I think the gold's going to be a very competitive division. There's a lot of teams where there's a lot of change and the programs are growing and um, we're just excited to see how this kind of unfolds being the first year in the new division. But we know that there's uh, some tough opponents for sure. And um, we're just going to do our best to be prepared to give each week our, our best shot. Um, when you look at you guys coming in, of course, um, you know, changing a program around, you know, there's going to be some, ups and downs. I mean, like, um, I mean, like, I know that, um, experiencing with Royal Oak this year, um, we talk about, um, I want to talk to you about the postseason system a little bit. Um, the new playoff format, I want to get your thoughts on this. Um, I think they're going more regional, I think this year. So talk about that format. Yeah, it's something we haven't put a ton of focus on. We know the change in the format and, you know, we know how it's going to impact us, but, um, in terms of just the playoff format, that's something we're going to look at down the road. We know each week matters and we know the point system, but playoffs are something that are, are distant future for us. So we're looking at, you know, Holly week one and getting ready for our scrimmage against Milford and uh, just preparing for what's in front of us. We don't want to start thinking about playoffs too early. And that's a good thing to th not think about us. Don't think about postseason early. Um, when you look at, when you look at a course, I know, I know with Royal Oak, I mean, like you look at, you know, when you look at the Ravens, I mean, like I've watched the Ravens a lot on CMN. Um, you know, when you look at this team, um, this, this community, um, what, it, I mean, what brings Royal Oak fans out to Raven games every night? You know, Royal Oak is just a great city and community to be a part of. Um, our fans, our, our students, they're all energetic. Royal Oak just kind of gravitates towards football. And it's something that we've noticed even at the middle school games where they're having, you know, 500 fans show up to a middle school football game. And it's just an exciting time. This community wants, you know, their football team to be successful. And we're going to do everything we can through this off season and through August and through the season to make this community proud. Um, doesn't necessarily translate the wins, but we mean being who we are in the community and being an active part of it and just making the city proud and getting them excited for Friday nights. Um, before I let you go, coach, um, I do want to talk a little bit about your playing days. Of course, you were at Farmington. Um, I mean, learning from coach John Bechtel. Um, what has coach Bechtel meant for you, um, building and helping you and helping you build, um, build what you be, what you, what you are. Yeah. I mean, coach Bechtel is a great resource for pretty much everything. Uh, you know, the one thing that he had that's really helped is his organization. Everything has was um, everything he's provided me is just ways to help keep this program organized and make sure that we have everything prepared for our students as they start coming onto the field and, and getting involved in our football activities. So he's really been uh, somebody I can count on both him and coach Albrecht and coach Saroach. Um, they've all been extremely helpful with, just this transition, this program, and um, 
bouncing questions off of them. So it's been nice to have those colleagues around uh, the OAA and the KLAA to, to feed off and ask questions too. Um, and it's going to be very interesting. Of course, um, you guys are scrimmaging Milford. That's going to be a very interesting scrimmage. Um, Milford, of course, made a, was a postseason team last year, but um, has a new coach over there. Um, you know, how did that scrimmage come up with you guys scrimmaging Milford? Uh, you know, their coach reached out to us. Uh, same situation. He was a new coach taking over a program. And um, it's actually a Milford and Farmington used to scrimmage back in the day. So there's some level of comfort between the coaching staffs kind of knowing um that history there so he reached out asked if it would be something we'd be interested in and we jumped on the opportunity um we think all three teams there are going to be solid teams and um that also was how seven on seven came about uh you know coach herstein reached out and we were excited about the competition there and our biggest thing is getting our players to play against the best as often as we can to prepare us and hopefully get us better for the season. And I seen that seven on seven. Um, I know state chance was over there. Um, um, you went up against some really good teams. You went up against North Farmington. You went up against Oak Park. Um, um, how, how is playing those teams in seven on seven going to help you guys hang in the season? Yeah, I mean the seven on seven was tough. We had uh, Novi, we had CC, we had Oak Park, uh, North Farmington, Livonia, Franklin, uh, Warren, Mott. There were some great, great teams out there. And when you're playing against all these teams that are consistently in the playoffs and doing really well, um, it can only help your program. They see this uh, level of competition and they learn to adjust to it. We also had Wall Lake Western and Wall Lake Northern. Um, just overall, a lot of great football teams in one spot and. We were excited to be invited and excited to join and looking forward to continuing that for years to come. Mm -hmm. um, also talk about Makai. I mean, like what has Makai been, you know, how's he been doing this off season? I know he got committed to central Michigan. Um, talk a little bit more about um, Makai Jenkins a little bit, please. Yeah. Makai is uh, a passionate leader on the football field. He is really embracing this challenge of uh, being the captain and getting this team ready for a senior season. Uh, he is all in on getting this uh, this senior year to be his best year yet. And so his work ethic on and off the football field and getting this team to act as a family has been his main focus. And so he is constantly spearheading, you know, team bonding events and ways to just incorporate his teammates and get everybody to trust each other. So we've been really, really impressed with everything he's done. And um, again, we're just excited to see him in his zone on the field on Fridays. Um, before I let you go, coach, um, what is your expectations this year at Royal Oak? I mean, like you look at, of course, the Ravens as a program has had some down years. I mean, like, um, but when you look at Royal Oak, it looks like the Ravens are coming back from rising again. Yeah, Sammy, I mean, our biggest focus this year is just to give these kids the best experience possible. We want them to just have fun playing football and, you know, sometimes with the competitive nature of high school football, that gets lost in the translation. But, you know, we're fortunate to teach and coach these uh, players about a game that we love so much. And so our focus is to get these kids excited to be at practice, excited about everything we're doing, and just really to give them the best experience possible. We think that's only going to help our, you know, our program in the long run. So it's not necessarily about the wins and losses coming up this season. It's about making sure that these kids have – these memories that they won't ever forget. I'm looking forward to seeing you at media day this coming week. Coach, um, Royal coach, Justin Truett. Um, thank you for joining us this week on the podcast. Thanks so much, Sammy. Yep. I will see you next week. I'll see you this week. <laughs> All right. See you then. Thank yep. you. Yep. Um, Royal coach, Justin Truett. Um, when you look at the Ravens this year, I mean, I think Royal Oak could be in line for a good year. I, I I think Royal could be in line for a, you know, when you look at the Ravens this year, I mean, I think they can be. I mean, they could surprise some people. Now, when you look at the gold division, obviously you got Berkeley, you got Avondale, um, Pontiac, um, and then you have, um, it, I mean, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, the gold, obviously, you, I know the Berkeley-Royal Oak rivalry. Um, that is going to be interesting to watch. Um, Berkeley taking, I mean, then you have the, um, Avondale, then you have Royal Oak taking on Avondale. I mean, Avondale 
We know Avondale is very athletic, well coached under Coach Corey Bell. They were a playoff team a year ago. Um, and then you have, um, and then you have, um, you know, then there's Pontiac. Pontiac is a team that's up and coming, really improving. Um, and then there's Ferndale. I mean, Ferndale and Royal Oak, we know last season, um, when, um, Ferndale and Royal Oak played, um, Royal Oak beat Ferndale at Ferndale. And that game really gave them a lot of confidence. So when I look at Royal Oak this year, it would surprise me if they over exceed expectations. It really wouldn't surprise me if they did. And there's a couple reasons why I think they would. Because when you look at the Ravens, here's a team that, here's a, here's a program I know that's been, it's had some rough years. They've had some really challenging years. But, you know, when you look at, how you have a lot of experience back. Um, this Royal Oak could surprise some people. I mean, I think when you look at what they have, um, the direction that they're going, the program strength is on the rise there. I think they could surprise some people. Um, if when you look at the matchup, you look at the you look at the matchups. Um, you know, for Royal Oak playing against um Holly Week One, that's a difficult matchup. Um, for them, and I'm curious to see how Royal Oak does traveling to Holly. Um, it is not a easy trip from Royal Oak to Holly on a Friday night. It is not going to be an easy trip. Easy trip for them. It will not be. Um, then you're going against Troy. We know that's a rivalry there. Um, and then you get to play um Troy Athens, and that one's a very interesting matchup there. Um. When you look at the rivalry between Royal Oak and Troy, I know there's not, you know, they haven't really played each other every year and all that, but I think this could be a very interesting matchup. I am very curious to see how Makai Jane, how Royal Oak will cover Darius Whiteson. I am very curious. I know Troy could have some trouble stopping Makai Jenkins. I mean, there's a battle of two-star players in that matchup. But I think Ellie Finch could have a big year. I really do. I think she's going to have a big year. Because playing on the line, playing at left guard, that's a very difficult position. I mean, you know, if you have a right-handed quarterback, you know, the left side, you know what I mean? It's going to be interesting. But I'm curious to see how Royal Oak does this year. I mean, very, very curious to see what happens with them. Um, I think with Royal Oak, they could surprise some people. They could really surprise some people. And then... Earlier on in the pod, I talked about Stony Creek. Stony Creek's in the same boat as, um, you know, Stony Creek's in the same boat. I mean, they could surprise some people as well. I mean, Royal Oak, I mean, Stony Creek can be, I think they could surprise some people. Now, I think when you look at Stony Creek's schedule, you know, when I look at playing a team playing like Troy Mumford, um, that's going to be interesting. That'll be very interesting. Um, closing out the year with New Ball Breakaway, that's going to be very tough for them. That's going to be very interesting. Um, but back to Royal Oak. Um, I think, you know, when I look at Royal Oak, I mean, Hudson Seidel, I think he needs to have a big year. Um, obviously, when I watched the tape on, on Hudson, he had some ups and downs. I mean, there were moments he looked really good, and there were some moments that, you know, you like to have back. Um, so when I'm, I'm very curious to see how Royal Oak does this year, just really, really curious to see how they do this year. Um, now when I look at that schedule, it's, it's tough, but if they could surprise and exceed expectations, I think they got, they're more than capable. I mean, when I look at the rest of the gold, I think the gold could exceed expectation more. I think that the gold, um, you know, I think Pontiac I mean, like, I think they're going to be solid, even though, um, even though they had to change their week one from Detroit Osborne to Madison Heights Bishop Foley. That's going to be a tough matchup for them. That's going to be a really tough matchup going against Madison Heights Bishop Foley. That's going to be really challenging. And then you look at week, um, and then they got Mount Clemens in there. I think that's a winnable game. And they close out the year with Garden City. I think for Pontiac, those are winnable games. Um, 
and then you look at the um, and then you look at um, Berkeley. They got a tough schedule. They can open up the year with Milan. That's gonna be tough. Um, Avondale. Um, when you look at them, I mean, I mean Ferndale. I mean, like with Ferndale, they got to play Macomb Lance Cruz to start off Week One, and then they got to play Grand Rapids West Catholic, which is really a difficult matchup for them. So when I look at this matchup for Ferndale, I mean, it's gonna be a challenge for them. I mean, and then, and then when you look at um, Avondale, I mean, like I think Avondale could do some, could do wonders. I mean, curious to see how the quarterback's gonna look. Um, curious to see on a couple things, um, with them. But overall, when I look at the gold division this year, there's a lot of parity. Um. I think, you know, when you look at this division, there is, I think, you know, I think Royal Oak's got a chance to be a sleeper in this division. Um, but the teams that stand out right now look to be it's Berkeley and Avondale. So those are the two that stand out. And then in Stony Creek's case, you know, they're going through the gauntlet of the red. When you look at proven powerhouses in West Bloomfield, you got Adams in there now, you got Clarkston, you got Oxford, you got Lake Orion. I mean, those are teams that are well-proven programs that have had a ton of success in the past. And you look at with with and in Stony Creek, we know they've had some success themselves. I mean, let's not forget 2020. I mean, 2019, 2020. I think arguably were the two best, one of the two best years of Stony Creek football. I mean, 2019. When you look at what Stony Creek did, I mean, yes, they um they got into the playoffs at five and four. Um, they gave Lake Orion everything it could handle. I mean, they dominated Lake Orion time of possession that year. I remember that playoff game real well. Um, but, and then 2020, it was a great year for Stoney. I mean, they knocked off Southfield. Um, that was one of their big wins of the year. Um, so when I look at both these two teams, um, West Blue, when I look at these two teams, Stoney Creek and Royal Oak, both teams have upside. They're going to be on the rise. Um, I think they could surprise some people this year. Um, maybe when I, maybe when I do my projections this year, I mean, when I did my projections, you know, I kind of might, maybe might have underestimated some of these teams. Um, but I'm very curious to see how these two teams, particularly Royal Oak, how they're going to do this season. Of course, Royal Oaks got a lot of experience coming back. That is a big deal. Um, and then on the flip side, you have, um, and then on the flip side, you know, I am very curious to see how this team, do, Royal Oak does, especially on the defense side of the ball, because I know I talked to Coach Truett. He was very high on this defense. Um, very curious to see, and but I'm also curious to see how their offense is going to be. Is Royal going to be more of a spread? That is the big question because last few years, they've been a power play team. I mean, they've been a power team. I mean, and they're still going to have some of those traits this year. I mean, when I talked to coach, um, he said that the strength is going to be their, um, you know, they're going to go with their strengths. And, you know, and I think the strength obviously is going to be running the ball. Um, but, you got to have balance at some point. You know what I mean? You got to have some balance at some point. Um, because, you know, there's going to be teams that are going to say, are going to probably line you up, maybe go eight, eight guys in the box. And then you're going to have to, you know, see if they dare to throw them. You know what I mean? Dare you to throw. So I'm curious to see what happens. Really, really curious to see what happens. Um, we're in the month of August, so that means football is near and a lot to talk about um, this week. A lot to talk about, especially because you got media day coming up. Um, first day of football, that starts next week. Um, really, really curious to see how, um, you know, really curious to see how, how these teams mesh. I mean, especially when you look at the OA this year going four divisions. Um, a six six five five format. Um, looking at the expectations this year, um, you know, hearing from a lot of coaches, um, talking about their teams, um, talking about everything coming into the year. Um, just a lot of expectations um, for everybody. 
Um, so there's a lot of excitement coming. So those are my thoughts coming into the year. Um, I'm curious to see how um, some of these teams do. Um, before I go, I um, want to give my, um, you know, I want to give my condolences to the um, Clarkson boys basketball family. Of course, um, they, um, Dan Owens um, passed away tragically. Um, I'd like to send my condolences to the Clarkston um, basketball family um, and the Owens family at this difficult time. Um, I want to send my condolences out to the Wolves Nation. Um, before I let you go, um, make I want to wish everybody the best of luck this season. Um, of course, um, the dead week is this week, so you know, so make sure that um, so very curious to see what happens this week. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, now I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you stay tuned to the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information on um, around the OAA. Um, of course, we have volleyball districts that are out. We have a lot of things that are coming out this week um, from the MHA, of course. Um, so I'm very curious to see what happens going forward here. Um, all right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care, everybody. Stay safe. God bless. And see you on next week, everybody. I will see you next week. Take care and see you all next week.